hello and uh, good evening on this January, Jan- why I keep saying January? <laughs> June 8th, Wednesday, June 8th, 2022. The time is 10.56 p.m. and welcome to early in the a.m. with Isha. Unlike yesterday's content where I talked about sensitive Sensitive subjects is what I should say. Today I'm just talking about parents, mothers and fathers, and the good and bad feelings that comes with parenthood. I'm personally not a parent, but um, I know a little bit about parenthood, a little bit, I guess from my auntie's perspective, but I know enough to make a podcast about it, an episode about it. So for me... One thing that really strikes me is is losing a parent early. I lost my father when I was my twin brother and I lost our father when we were this had to be nineteen eighty seven. And we were eight at the time. So it has now been thirteen about well, thirty six years. And uh I guess everything is true. Everything is true that we learn about growing up in a single parent home, not by choice. You know what I mean? It's not, you know, one of those things where he would have just been an absentee father. I uh I I wanna there's such a deep part of me. It's mad deep. For some crazy reason it wants to finish the sentence for him. I wanna finish the sentence to say he would have been this person. I would have forced him to say he would have been this type of father or you know, that type of dad. And I spend a lot of my years, especially when he comes up in my mind, trying to put him in who he would have been if he was still here. And that's, that, that is so, that can be a quick fix, but in the long run, it's mad damaging. Because your body, your spirit, you look to stand on those, those things you create. You look to stand on it. And when it crumbles, you really don't know where it comes from. And then the insecurity points directly to the source. It says she has daddy issues for whatever the reason. Somebody dipped out early for whatever the reason. And this is how you feel about it. That's just how I feel about it. In the long run. My mom did the job alone. And she had a. My stepfather was around for a little while, but then they separated. But she's done pretty much the whole job on her own. You know, I I kind of didn't give her her kudos because she's kind of, you know, raised, you know, an international basketball star. And I didn't see the struggles that she went through with my brother and getting him prepared for the world in front of him. And the giving him the dialogue to challenge and to channel and then to succeed and to flourish and to and to uh, cultivate with all sex of life across the planet because he's pretty much been on every continent there is playing basketball. You know, I never, you know, saw the struggle between them because I was pretty much in my own silence and my own issues, trying to find that same connect that me and her would have. But it wasn't with me and her, it's with me and him. And sometimes in that dynamic, you got to let the parent have all the space they need to to parent that, that particular child. Because sometimes the success that's in them just demands, it demands more parenting. It, de- it demands more structure. Sometimes the parent just has to be there just in a loud, hoarding voice. Or just in a, in a place that, you know, just pounding out directions pounding out praise, pounding out presence. As long as they're, as long as they're doing that, the child's like, okay, because I got a thousand other voices in my mind that's telling me to do the exact opposite. I need somebody to challenge all those voices so that I, I always know to go in the right direction. You know, I'm, a part of me is sad because I'm not a parent right now, and my brother has two kids. And I don't have one. I, I'm, that part of me feels like I'm missing out on something. And whenever I feel sad about, you know, not having my own little ones running around, I always go to Isaiah 54. And uh, any of the Bibles, King James or the New International Version, any of those. And I always say things like, 
you know, it says, more is the children of a desolate woman than all the women with all the kids or more, more the, the desolate woman will have more husbands than a woman with all the lovers in the world, like the number of, of granules, sands and stuff. Oh, I feel blessed in that essence. I, I feel good. I guess on this time, I'm supposed to be like, hello, everybody. Hello, everyone listening near and far. Talking about what parents do and what they don't do. (sighs) And how do you feel when you adopt people who aren't, you know, in your bloodline and you treat them like mothers and fathers? There's affinity there. I think in the in the race against opposing factors that come with parenthood, we always seek the same validation from the outside source. Somebody that has that has that wasn't present during the uh, the the family fights and stuff like that. Sometimes you look for somebody. Oh my God, I agree with you without all the fussing and fighting. A lot of times we run to people for validation and we find mothers and fathers outside of our, you know, blood relatives. Have you ever lost a, 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 a mother and father in that text? You know, I, I, I did. My, one of my uncles, girlfriend, she passed away a long time ago. And she wasn't too much older than me. She would have been like an older sister. She was about 16 years older than me. But she passed away years ago. And she was one that definitely was like the mother outside of my house. Like, she just had the temperament, but she had the same youth that was like, oh my gosh, she's energetic like me. She treats me like an equal, but she's very stern. You know what I mean? And she passed away about, I would say about going on 25 years ago. And she's somebody I miss terribly. Definitely. She was someone who... If her and my uncle broke up, it, nothing was changed. Like, her presence would still be demanded around the house. Like, she's forged. She's the type of person that forges the same relationship with everybody else, not just him. So even if him and her, you know, broke up, she was still over the house with my grandmother and, and things like that. Like, she was that type of person. Like, you wouldn't see the difference in, like, well, we're breaking up, so are you still coming to my game tomorrow? Like, there would have been no difference. It wouldn't have made a difference either way. She's somebody I miss like that. I talk to her sometimes, just out the blue. I think I, I'm not so much so as I did when I was younger. Not so much so, in my early, especially when I was struggling in my early 20s. I was going to any and everybody trying to stand up straight, except just to go to God. Go to God so much, but it's sometimes that burn in your spirit, that, that, uh, rebellious force is just beyond your control because if it was always within control you know what I mean there would be no issues there would be no drug issues alcohol issues violence and sex issues and and cultural issues and social statuses and illnesses it wouldn't be none of that stuff if we could just nip it in the butt when it happens some spirits are just that 51 on 49, and no matter how bad we get up to that 49, it always says, oh, but I got you by one. And then it knocks us all the way back down them stairs. And then we got to just rush to get back up to the top. I love my mom a lot. I I wouldn't be, be here because, without her. She's been my backbone for the longest time. And the the problem is, especially when you're at that age where... Like me, you're in your 40s, and your mom, my mom is in her late 60s, and you're at that place where, you know, the relationship has resolved. Like, the point of mother and daughter, you know, it's dissolved. It's got to move to that next place, or you just repeat the original cycle over again forcefully, and it can get very dysfunctional. Like, mother and daughter are supposed to graduate from rearing up the daughter through school and learning and puberty and and etiquette and decorum and stuff like that. And then it's that's supposed to fade out. And then you're supposed to move on to the daughter who's in the working force out on her own dating, getting married, having kids. That's you know, healthily that's the next progression. But when that doesn't happen, 
and the daughter fails at some point and she's just so remedial she just keeps repeating the same mistakes with bad choices in men she's not having kids and she's getting fired from jobs the parent doesn't know which way to go and they either belittle the the, the person and they still treat them like a child even though they're a grown person or they overtly ignore them altogether and they're just trying to find a way to, to oust them out and get them away because they want to progress to that next you know phase with that person and they'll just look outside of the household and adopt daughters who who have progressed to that next stage and who they can give a different type of motherly advice to like they just want to be the grandma and they want to do to the grandkids what you know they want to start that phase with the grandkids going to school and and rearing them up and stuff like that and then they want to assist the parent but when that's not there you know, a lot of times moms are put in very difficult situations with their adult children. They don't know which way to go. They don't know how to help the one that has so many struggles compared to the one who progressed to the second stage and they know how to be with that one but not with the other one. And then you have kids, grown kids, who feel resentment or feel left out because of the manner in which they fail, in which, let me see, in which the, their transition in life wasn't met with open arms and they didn't the 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 change of power as I would say didn't happen as it like like it should have happened is what I should say almost like what happened with Joe Biden and uh, President Biden and President Trump like that transition in power kind of didn't go as smooth as it could have went you know what I mean it happened there a lot I go. I think that's where it is. It's that stubbornness in me. That you know, it's this a is an overgrown child essence there that wants criticism in the slightest way, but strikes out within when somebody touches the air. It's like it's like sunburn to the thousandth degree, and this person just keeps touching the hottest spot. You're like, stop touching, and it will like sit down and listen. And this this whole dialogue going on. And, not wanting to understand where I went wrong in my whole role and why I'm not married with kids on my own like I should be. I really can't blame her for how she feels. She's allowed to have her feelings. And my shortcomings in life shouldn't be, you know, standing up ready to judge her for whatever the reason. <sighs> yeah. I went to, um... I had to go to my uh, university today to get my school bus because my classes start on Monday. Back in that familiar routine that I was in before when I was going to Liberty. And just that refresher, even though it's just for two months, so I'm going to get back into that routine of reading and learning again just to get my brain freshened up because I think I overkilled myself. The first time, well, that, that last time, that three years. Now, I went to school all three semesters. I did the spring, the summer, and the fall, three three years straight. And it was it's an overkill for someone who hadn't been in school since 2006. And I was a full-time student then. And then I've been on this hiatus for, what, 10-plus years? And then I just jumped in on overkill. My brain is like, whoa, whoa, slow down. Oh, my God, crack, break. And then I forced myself back up, and I kept going. And then I think that last couple of weeks, it was like the culmination of all. I was just, just mongering and suffering. I was just like, I'm about to crack under the pressure. But I was so used to pushing myself past the pain when I was actually done. I was as sick as a dog. Like, my body was just coughing up everything, looking for some air. And then I let it breathe. But I'm back in that path again. You know, trying to do bigger and better things. I mean, I like this outlet here, speaking my voice, but I just have to, I have to make the bigger, the bigger leap for my own sanity, for my own freedom, and for my own financial stability. It's so crazy how I made all this money with the jobs I've had, and I never thought about my future. I was spending money like as long as I'm paying my bills here and take care of myself here, then I'm good. That's not true. It's not true. Parents bear the brunt of kids past adulthood. And I was no exception. I, I didn't see it as an exception. And I didn't treat it as such. But we're not all perfect. 
public speaking isn't a, a correct thing. It isn't a, 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 a great thing. It's, it's for those who are cracking somewhere. Because in, in my creative mind, I'm a force to be reckoned with. But creativity is a planned thing. I don't have to be live to be creative. I can pull out a piece of paper and create. Or I can lay in my bed that I, you know, in a room that I designed and look out my window and, and just and bounce off of conductors. Like I can take a, a, any movie that's, and I can use that as a conductor to make great dialogue or to create a second story. I can do those things all day. But how do I make that real? Because I do that for my own entertainment and for my own structure and for my own sanity. I don't do it because I want to make money off of it. I haven't learned how to bounce off of that secularness to make money off of it. I guess I'm not fast enough, I should say. I, I, I told myself that I have a great talent. Quite, I can be quite dumb in trying to make money off of certain things. I just, I don't know where that aspect of my personality comes from. But I think in making myself go faster and putting myself out there more, I have to be outside of this person. I think this person, the use that I, whatever I was doing from this, the use is dying. And me being in it, I can kind of smell the corpse rotting from within. So I got, okay, stepping out of this, you have to do something independent that these little whims can stand on. Because I'm sure if they can transform into something else, it'll be a beautiful butterf butterfly coming out of that cocoon if it's not too late. I guess nobody's really on here listening. But uh, I'm going to get better at this, you know. Better at talking about feelings and how I feel about life and stuff like that. I think I can do a great job at this. But uh, I'm not going to talk too long. Uh, thank you for listening. And uh, see you more.